straight into it today, guys. Um, we've uh, snuck a bit of a snag with the uh, with the build. This uh, x-axis is actually about this much too short. Um, I think it's because of the way that the I'll get you a good look at the angle of the bearings. But as you can see. The bearings themselves actually do protrude out quite a bit. Now I didn't take into account when I measured uh, the width from this rail across to this rail. When I measured it, this piece of steel is actually the exact width from the edge to edge. Once you add in the, uh, the spaces here in the on the brackets, so once we add those couple of spaces there, it actually adds an extra inch or so. So I had to go buy some new steel. The other snag that I've hit is these are the racks, and on the rack itself, we have these M6 holes. Now, ideally, I would like to to just bolt these on because. In the plans, it just says to weld the rack onto the bottom of the of the rail here, but I think that's a bit of. I don't want the rack to warp with the heat that I put into it and so forth. So what I've done is I've added these holes here. So these holes um, fit an M6 bolt, uh, but unfortunately. The downside to that is because it's so close to this shoulder, I can't actually sit, when you sit the bolt in, it sits on an angle like so. So what I'm thinking of doing is drill a hole through the side here, just wide enough for the bolt so that when it slots in, it'll actually go in straight and then I can put all the bolts in place and then tighten them up and then bring the, the rack up that way. So. Uh, that's what we're going to do today is I'm going to put in these holes and then I'm going to grind off These welds because I want to use, reuse these plates again um, And I'll just cut it. I've got another piece of this 50 by 50 by 1.6 um, So I can cut that to length, but I might cut that once I set these rails up first Put the just as a rough guide then I can work it out. I've got a feeling it's going to be about this is 1600 I've got a feeling it's going to be about 1650 uh, maybe just a touch over so that's why I bought a 2.4 meter length um, and I'll just measure it up and and cut it because I do have some movement on these uh, these are slotted where these screws are so I do have some movement on these and this will help with alignment later on down the track so we'll get into uh, drilling these holes So I won't bore you with the rest of these. We'll just go ahead and slot them through and uh, I'll come back to you and once we uh, do our test fit. Okay, so now it's a case of just fitting this up. Tight in spots. So I might just go and Mark the holes that are tight. Just go right down this end. Go right here. He starts to bind on this one. Come out that way a bit. So if we back this one off. Movement there. That one's a bit tight. 
That one's a bit tight. So what we might do is we might just open these holes up a little bit, I think. Because I've had to mark these by eye. So I might just slowly open these holes up. And we'll come back. Okay, let's try again. I've just opened those holes up a little bit. And so there we go. In the end, it was only two holes. The front one, one in the middle here that was slightly offline. Now we should, fingers crossed, I can't do these up too tight because I can't. Just going to slowly work my way down along the line. Now the, again, the reason I'm doing this is because if I ever have to replace the rail, I don't have to grind off my uh, rack. Because I was worried about Warping this, or if the rail edge gets a, if I drop something on it, it gets a massive ding in it, and then I've got to replace the edge or the rail. And I'm like, geez, I don't want to cut and grind these off all the time and introduce heat into them because they're hardened. I don't really want to introduce heat into them because it'll throw out the temper. Feel. So it'll soften it. So. So it looks as though, ladies and gentlemen, we have got our first rail pretty much done. So I'll give you another look at that. So here it is here. So we've got our rack on here now. It's flush up against the outside. And then I'll just go and uh, get it ready to position so that you guys can uh, have a look at how it sits. And then literally it's just a case of replicating this for the other side. So. Okay, so I'll just bolt this uh, rail on now. Just move it so you guys have got a bit of view of what's going on here. So I'll sit that like that and we'll just get... I've been putting a um no oh, that's nice. I've been putting a bit of just sewing machine oil just on the thread just to keep it lubricated so it's got something to sit. Just a little bit. Now before these actually get tightened up when I get the x-axis on, these will be loose and I will set the axis all the way up this end, tighten this bolt, tighten the bolt on the other side and leave this to float so that when I roll the axis all the way down to this end, it will self-align and I'll tighten these bolt, this bolt and the one on the other side and then I'll tighten in, in between and that should align the rails perfectly for me. Okay, so here's a view of the rack sitting flush up against this beam here or this top bar, um, what I'll do is once, as I was talking about earlier, we will align these properly once the x-axis is done. Um, but I'm pretty happy with the way that came out. It's a little bit, a couple of mil on the rack, but I don't think that's going to matter much. I've got a little bit of wiggle room with these bolts in here. Okay, so we're going to get the, um, we're going to weld this tab on here. This is part of the, this is the start of the x-axis. Um, so what I need to do is, these were originally, I originally had a piece here, but it was actually too short, because uh, I didn't take into account the overhang of the 15 mil rack on the back of the, um, on the rails. So therefore this piece was, it worked out, it was just over an inch and a bit short. So I went and bought a new piece of steel today. So we're just gonna tack these on Make sure they're square, then just do exactly what we did last time, welding through here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach the roller bearings onto here. I'm gonna measure off uh, one of the, sit on one of the rails, and then I'm gonna attach the other plate to the other set of roller bearings and measure off, and then that way I can, I've got a max distance I can work off, and then I can allow for moving in it.
is my TIG finger. Get yourself one of those, a TIG finger. Attach on this rail. So I'll give you a close up of this. So basically, these are the angle brackets that I, um, I think they're like 50 by 50. We've got a slotted hole here and here. I've got an M10 bolt that I've just pushed up to the, that pushes in and there's a bolt hiding in here. So I'll give you a better look. So there's a bolt there, that's my spacer. Then I've got my bearing and then another bolt. See that? Yeah, bolt, another bolt. So there's my spacing, and there's the other bolt. So two of these, um, they're 120 degree V bearings, uh, and then there's some slots in here so that we can move the X axis this way, uh, and there's slots in here and allow the x-axis to shuffle this way so it fits on the rails. So this thing's starting to take shape. Okay, so we've got this rail here. We've got our bar rail on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up this rail off probably this back edge and then I'll work and we'll work out the length off this front edge so that way you guys can get a, a, a better view of what's going on and what I'm attempting to do. Six hundred, six sorry, sixteen hundred and twenty-five. So sixteen hundred and twenty-five millimeters or sixty-four inches. The last piece I have was 63 inches, so it is exactly an inch short, uh, inch too short. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the moment of truth. I haven't tested this, so what you see is what I will see. That's how we like to roll. Well, hopefully that's what we'll be doing. Rolling. Fingers crossed. So I've got to tighten these bolts up first. So let's do that. So 17 mil will just tighten up these. On the, I'll get you guys down. We'll have a look, and I'll show you. As you can see, we're sitting on the outside of the bearing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen up the rail, and we'll just slot push it in a bit so that it centres in that V groove. And I'm going to do the same on the other side as well. So we'll just push this rail in a little bit, and we'll see how we go. Okay, so we had a bit of a bit of tracking, some little tracking issues. So what I've done is I've loosened off both all these bolts, and now I have the bearings on this rail centered on the rail here uh, on the other side. So what I'm going to do now, and the the z x sorry the x axis is actually quite square now. So that's where these come in. These so we'll just, just snug these up. And I'll snug up the other side. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll forward a touch. Get 
me shift, get me ratchet and tighten up these bolts here. At the, so at the very start. Okay, so that one's tight. That one's tight. And we'll track this down. So it's all at the other end now. Tighten this one. Tighten this one. So what you're seeing is, this is why I've got two drive motors, so that it's getting driven off one side, otherwise it's going to crab and come off. So that's why with this, this type of build, you need two, two stepper motors on either side. So, so you get the tracking. So if we push from the middle and they move, Pretty good, pretty good movement actually. And then off the side, uh, I'll give you a swing around so you can have a look. So this is where the motor mount sits on the side here. And this motor mount bolts here. And the motor attaches in here now. Straight away I can see I'm going to have a bit of an issue here um, because my motor mount's going to have to sit like I don't have enough, enough on my arm because of how high this is so I might actually have to make some some new mounts unfortunately or we just extend the, the pin here so it sits further down well, as you can see guys we, uh, we hit that snag with the with the motor mounts uh, and that's mainly because this rail is 30 mil or is 10 mil or 15 mil too high than what it's supposed to be uh, so what we'll probably do is look at maybe getting some linkages uh, to extend these down but we'll uh, I guess we'll have to nut that out first and uh, we'll save that for a later video so uh, thanks for hanging around this long and uh, thanks for watching cheers